I'm recording this message on Saturday, April 6th, a few days before a total solar eclipse is supposed to be visible in the United States. Apparently it's going to be the last solar eclipse we can see until 2044. A few days ago, I got some messages from folks telling me, you got to go see the eclipse. Seeing the total solar eclipse is an incredible experience. And not only that, being in the path of totality is really important. So we are up at the butt crack of dawn on Saturday, April 6th. We're going to travel to Chicago, stay there for one night, and then travel to Indianapolis, which is in the path of totality, and see a total solar eclipse for the very first time. It's going to be my first time experiencing anything like this. So let's head to the airport, go to Chicago, and we will see how this all goes. Alright, we just got to Chicago. It has been a long day so far. Uh, I only slept like three hours last night. The plane was delayed, then the flight took four and a half hours, and then we were in traffic for one hour. But we finally got to the hotel. Tomorrow is Sunday. We are going to be driving to Indianapolis tomorrow. And then on Monday is the eclipse. So hopefully tonight we'll get some good sleep, get some good food, and then get ready to take in a life-changing astrological event. Okay, it is the next morning. Uh, I have slept nine hours, so that was great. Uh, and now feel ready to go see the eclipse tomorrow. We are about to head out on the drive to Indianapolis, but first, it's breakfast time. All right, we have connected with a couple of our friends. We are now in the car on the way to make the 166 mile drive to Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, it is very rainy and cloudy outside today, which is not super promising, but hopefully it will all clear up in time for the eclipse tomorrow. We are about halfway to Indianapolis. Uh, it is striking going from Chicago to Indiana. You're going from skyscrapers and apartment buildings and lots of stuff happening to just nothing. Just flat earth as far as the eye can see. Uh, but there's been a lot of traffic. I think hundreds of thousands of people are traveling to Indiana to see the eclipse uh, this week. Uh, we are almost there, still excited. Also our driver's doing a great job. After a several hour drive, we have arrived in Indianapolis and check it out. It's a massive rainbow behind me. Uh, that means we have a good omen for the eclipse tomorrow. It is April 8th, 1120 AM, and I am in Indianapolis, Indiana, the day of the total solar eclipse. In terms of cloud cover, there seems to be a few clouds high in the sky, but you can very easily see the sun and I'm not too worried about it. We'll see if it holds though. The partial solar eclipse will begin at around 1.50 p.m. It will last for about an hour and a half, and then there will be four minutes and two seconds of totality starting at 3.08 p.m. Then the eclipse will end about an hour and a half later at 4.23 p.m. Eastern time. It is really remarkable that we exist in a time where we can see a solar eclipse. I mean, think about all the stuff that needs to happen logistically for this to even occur. Uh, the sun is around 400 times the size of the moon, but it's almost exactly 400 times the distance so that they appear roughly the same distance to our eyes. And that is not a universal constant. You know, it's not like if a planet has a moon, it needs to be 400 times smaller than the sun. Like it just happens to be the case where we live on a planet 
that that proportion holds and we can therefore see the moon completely block out the sun. In terms of protective gear, I'll just show you what I bought. Uh, I bought from an authorized retailer. I got this solar snap set. And what it contains are two of these solar filters for phone cameras specifically that you can snap on using a Velcro filter and these safety glasses. So uh, you put these on and uh, they will protect you. Always buy from an authorized retailer for this kind of stuff. You don't want to mess around with looking at the sun without the proper protective equipment. I also got these Eclipse HD solar glasses. These are a little bit more like firm to put on the face. They're not as flimsy. Uh, they cost around $30. And so hopefully these will be put into use today as well. I feel very lucky to be here and I'm looking forward to seeing how the day unfolds. It's 1.30 p.m. local time, about 15 to 20 minutes before the eclipse is supposed to begin. Everything is like a normal day right now. Sun is out, birds are chirping. Uh, and once the eclipse begins, uh, the sun will begin to be obscured and then it'll take about an hour and a half or so before the eclipse reaches totality. The eclipse has begun. And if you look towards the sky using protection, you can see that a tiny sliver of the sun has been blocked off. Uh, it's pretty cool, but very, mild effect for now so yeah the eclipse has been going for about 40 minutes now we're about halfway to totality kind of cool you can see a big bite taken out of the sun things are starting to get darker and a little bit cooler we're about 15 to 20 minutes from totality and it's starting to get really interesting everything's getting a little cooler and darker uh it basically looks as though you're looking at everything through sunglasses like I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, I'll include a few shots here. I don't know if it'll really capture it, but yeah, it's uh, getting wild. We are eight minutes away from totality and it's already starting to get real dark and weird. Uh, but yeah, I'll just leave the camera on and we'll all react to it. We're, we're less than one minute out now. Less than one minute out now. Oh, does it feel a lot darker? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so dark. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so great. Creepy. Oh, wow. Yep. It's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just go for it. Yeah. Oh, so and, nice. it's a, and it's happening. <laughs> like laughing. Like someone did something. Oh, my God. Oh, oh that's God. it. All right, hey everyone, it's Dave Chen cutting in here from the future. I'm editing this video now, and I wanted to fill in some of the stuff that was going on while I was watching the actual total solar eclipse. I also want to point out I didn't have great equipment to capture the eclipse itself, so I might use some footage from NASA to illustrate some of the stuff I'm talking about. All right, anyway, here is my reaction to watching the eclipse. That's it! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy crap! Yeah, yes, look at it. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I remember screaming involuntarily, and if I'm to describe what I felt back then, I think it was this feeling that uh, what I was watching was something otherworldly. Like, do you remember the first Matrix movie, the opening scene, Trinity's running away from the agents, and she jumps over this huge gap, and then the agent jumps over the huge gap, and then the cop runs up to the edge, and he says, That's impossible. That's kind of what it felt like. A lot of people might be wondering, does it get dark? Is it like night when the eclipse is happening? It doesn't really get like night, but it, it does get like dusk. Like you can see in the footage here, when you look into the distance on the horizon, it's like the sun has just set. There's all these orangey colors, uh, but it's obviously in the middle of the day. The whole world feels like it's changing around you. Animal sounds change, birds stop chirping. Uh, when we were watching, some people set off fireworks. That was kind of funny. Anyway, you just get the sense that for the moment, there's something happening on earth, that you're seeing something that you're not supposed to see. To reference another movie, the thing that really felt special for me is, do you remember in The Force Awakens when Rey and Finn first meet Han Solo again and they ask him if all the stories of the Jedi were true? And Han Solo says, It's true. Now, I'm a huge believer in science. I don't need to see things necessarily to believe them. I believe that the earth revolves around the sun and the moon revolves around the earth and there's other ways of getting evidence for that. But there's something special about seeing evidence of it with your own eyes presented so starkly. 
one of the cool things I saw was this diamond ring effect, which is right before and after totality when the sun is poking around the edges of the moon, the, the mountains and valleys of the moon, and it kind of lights up like a diamond ring. It's incredible. During totality, you can also see these things called solar prominences at the edge of the sun. They're these little like plasma flares that you can only see with the naked eye during a solar eclipse. You've probably seen pictures of them, artist renditions of them, but when you're watching it during an eclipse, you're seeing it with your own eyes. And there's something really special about that. So was it worth it to see the total solar eclipse? In my opinion, absolutely. If you can, with mild to medium inconvenience and expense, see a total solar eclipse, you should try and make the trip. I want to thank one of my listeners, Andrew, for providing this analogy. Seeing a partial solar eclipse versus seeing a total solar eclipse is the difference between listening to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack in your car and watching Lord of the Rings on IMAX. There is no comparison. Like many of us, we've seen partial solar eclipses and we're like, oh, I think I understand what that is. It is a whole different ball game to watch the actual total solar eclipse. Why is it worth it to travel to see the solar eclipse? First of all, it's beautiful. Uh, the sky turns blue gray. It's just unlike anything I've ever seen before. You will never really experience the planet like you do when you watch a solar eclipse. Secondly, it will make you appreciate your place in the universe, like these bodies moving through the sky and we're just here. We have no control over these things that are happening all around us and, uh, it just makes you feel insignificant. And there's something beautiful about recognizing your place in this world and how small it is. And finally, it will make you grateful for science. It's so amazing that we as a species have A, figured out what an eclipse even is. Like, can you imagine existing hundreds of years ago and not even understanding what's going on? Uh, but B, how to view it safely. There's glasses and telescopes and all these things that we can use to view them safely and C, where and when to watch them almost exactly. It's incredible. Uh, the fact that we are able to do this, the fact that we exist at a time in human history when all that's possible uh, is really, really special. And I hope that you will take advantage of the ability to see total solar eclipses sometime in your lifetime. Now, in the United States, I don't think we're going to get a total solar eclipse until 2044, but they are happening all around the world. I think there'll be one in a couple of years in Spain. So if you're interested, do some research. They are findable. It's possible to travel to them. And I do think it's worth it. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed following along with my eclipse experience. I want to thank all my patrons at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. Uh, really appreciate everyone there for making my work possible. I am going to try to make more videos this year. And so if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, follow, subscribe, whatever it is on whatever platform you're on. Thank you so much for watching and see you later.